Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Um, I wanted to share something because it's pressing on my spirit. It won't stay. I can feel it where there's somebody out here that needs to hear this video. Um, originally, I had determined maybe I'll do it later on in a few days, but uh, the more I postponed, the heavier it got. So I'm going to share this video because I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is putting it on me and is pressing on me because there's somebody out here who needs to hear this, who needs to know that um, miracles are real, that they happen to us, these these spiritual, supernatural, as some people call them, movements of God, acts of God that come into the now where the eternal reaches into the now and affects our lives in a way that we know it was beyond us. It's beyond human uh, control. It's beyond anything we as a human being could ever conceive. Um, when the thought hit me, I was actually thinking about something that happened to me. Matter of fact, I was thinking about a few of them throughout my life. But the one that hit me the strongest that uh, came to my mind was years ago, I had been touched by the spirit. I used to go out on uh, the street in public and speak on bullhorns. And whatever the spirit gave me unction to say, I would say. Okay, it didn't matter what I thought or how I felt. It would get stronger and stronger until I released it. When I released it, I would get peace. And this one particular day, I was in the house and I was playing music. I was communing with God. I was dancing and I was caught up in the spirit. I was gone and I was loving it. And in the middle of dancing and communing with God, all of a sudden, I heard the Spirit say, go, go. And when he would tell me to go, I would get an image of the particular street he wanted me to go on. And I knew he would give me the words. Sometimes, depending on what I had read, he would pull the scripture up and I would just start getting revelation about what I was going to start out saying. And then the Spirit would just take it from there. Well, this particular day... Like I said, I was caught up in the spirit. I was dancing and I was just loving it. When you get in the presence of the Most High God, it is so blissful, so joyous, so rapturous that, uh, at least for me, I did not want to leave that presence, that space at that moment. And when he told me to go, my statement to him was, let me stay. I want to stay. All of a sudden, I remember being catapulted backwards and seeing myself kind of flying through the air. And this is in real time. This is in the natural. I was not dreaming. This was not a vision. It was in the natural. Okay. Uh, at the time, I had a two-tiered glass coffee table. It was two-tiered, two levels, two big sheets of glass encased in a metal frame. And... When I started falling backwards, um, I looked behind me and the table was there and I tried to catch myself, but I couldn't. And I knew I was going to fall into that table. Well, the first thing I did was call out the guy. I'm falling into the glass table. I'm falling into the glass table. And at, this is all happening. I mean, milliseconds. And at the same time, just like when you get ready to fall, there's that brace and then there's that fall. OK, well, when I braced and went up and was expecting to slam down, I went up and then there was a second up. Then I went down and I slammed into that two tiered glass table. I mean, I slammed where my body came through center. I, I hit it dead center and came crashing through the glass tables or the glass table because it's two tiers it's two levels of thick glass and i went through both of them bam bam and the way that i fell into it one leg was sticking up my other leg was kind of twisted and caught in the table i was 
twisted sideways and I could feel the shards of glass sticking in me at different points. It was in my back. One shard was up against my neck. My arm was caught up. It's like if you think about uh, a window, if a window breaks, normally there's shards. The pain doesn't come out clean when it's broken. There's shards sticking out. And I'm laying in this table caught, stuck with glass sticking all over. And when I come to myself in that moment, I'm like, God, I fell in the table and I knew just feeling the glass pressing. One was all up against my neck, big, thick, sharp. I couldn't even move. I'm kind of frozen. And I'm thinking I'm cut to shreds. I knew it. I'm just I'm cut to shreds in that moment. Uh, back then, my son, my oldest son was 12, and I knew he would be coming home from school within the next 40 minutes or so. And I asked God, I looked across the room at the telephone, and I asked God, let me keep presence of mind, let me stay conscious long enough to get to the phone and call my mother. My mother was alive back then. Let me call my mother to tell her I fell into the glass table don't let my son see me this way. I wanted her to come before he got there. My mother lived close to me, and I knew she would get there before 911. The problem with the situation was I also was uh, very aware of the fact that there was going to be massive amounts of blood. I, I, I fell through two tiers of glass. And I'm thinking the blood, I, I don't want to go in the shock. I don't want to freak out, start screaming. And behind the piece that was up against my neck, there was a few pieces stuck to my arm. And I could feel the thickness, the sharpness of it. I knew I was cut. And I was thinking, I got to keep my consciousness. And I also have to remain calm. I got to be able to push the phone, the numbers, to be able to actually make the phone call. No matter how much blood, I can't focus on the blood. I can't panic. I got to get to the phone. The problem was I was also jammed in the table. And I'm asking God, let me keep my presence of mind that if I can get out of this table, I can make it to that phone. Let me stay conscious long enough so I can contact my mother and she can get here to keep my son from finding me this way. I know I'm getting ready to die. That's going to be enough for him. But don't let him find me this way. I did not want that to be his last memory of me. And so I'm sitting there trying to figure out how do I get out of this table? Because I'm, I think I'm got to die right here. And then I can hear the spirit say, get up, get up. And I'm telling God, the glass, I'm jammed in the glass. The glass, if I move, it's going to cut me more. I literally felt the shards just cutting. I had pants on it. I, I figured my pants are shredded, blood everywhere. I was trying not to look. And again, I heard the voice of the spirit, get up. So I'm listening and I'm like, God, you know, you know, just this one agreement. Let me make the phone and call mommy. Let me call my mother. So I got up. And I felt the glass pulling. Like, in order to get up, I had to come across the glass where it's cutting me. It's got my arms under my legs, my back. And because I'm trapped, I'm jammed in it. And the glass, all the shards that were still in the table are cutting me as I'm trying to get up. I could feel it. And I'm just talking to God. Let me keep my presence of mind. Let me focus. Let me focus. I'm not going to panic. I'm going to make that phone. I got to get across the room to the phone. And I'm aware of the fact that there's probably going to be a lot of blood. I'm asking God if whatever cut my neck, if, if, if it starts shooting, let me put my hand over my neck and still stay on track. Keep my focus, get to the phone, make the call so my mother gets there in front of my son to keep him from finding me that way. Well, he tells me to get up. I'm walking across the floor and I'm looking direct. I'm never breaking stride. I'm never losing focus. I'm expecting in my mind there's probably going to be pools of blood. I'm, I'm thinking I'm amazed my shoes aren't squishing from the amount of blood pouring. 
And when I get ready to reach for the phone as I'm crossing the room, I'm thinking, okay, when you pick up the phone, when you reach for it, ignore the blood, ignore the blood. Don't look at the cuts. Don't look at the gases. Don't let it rattle you where you can't make this call because I don't know how long I'm going to stay conscious. And at the same time, I'm thinking, well, if I reach, if the blood comes streaming over the numbers, I won't be able to see. So I'm thinking, keep my, keep me mindful of where the numbers are. So because I made this call so many times, let me just go auto. So I, I reach for the phone and there's no blood. I'm trying to almost stay with a blind focus. I reach for the phone. There's no blood. And I start dialing the numbers, but I'm aware of my other hand, which had been down, jammed on the, underneath the table. One hand went down, the other arm was jammed up, and there's still no blood. So as I start calling the numbers, and I have it in my hand, I can see, even though I'm looking this way, I can see my feet. There's no blood. And I stop at a point like, wait a minute, there's no blood. I can feel the cuts. I can feel the gashes, that, that feeling you get when something cuts you sharp. And it's all over me. But in that moment, I decided I'm going to look. I'm just going to look down at my feet. If I see a big pool, I'm going to keep going. I looked down, and there was no blood at my feet. And then I started turning my hands over, and there was no blood on my hands. I started looking. There wasn't a cut on me. Nothing. I felt it. I still felt cut to shreds, but not one scratch. Then I could hear the voice of the Most High telling me, when I tell you to go, you go. Okay. That's one of the miracles. Um, when God wants us to move, it's God's decision. It's not ours. That's why I said I wasn't going to make this video. I debated it, but the spirit kept pressing on me to make it. Um, I've had multiple incidents in my life, as I'm sure many of you have, that you cannot explain it away by coincidence. I walked around for two or three days feeling cut to shreds. I mean, I took off my clothes, checked. There wasn't, I had no cuts, none. I don't even, it, unless you put the power of God on it, there's no way to explain that big shard of glass by my throat. And when I got up, it, it, it literally, I had to come up off of it and I felt it. And nothing, nothing, nothing. Not on my hands, not on my arm, not on my leg. One of the other things, and like I said, there are many, but one of the other things years ago, uh, I had moved into this big house. My two youngest kids were with me. My son was nine. My daughter was three. I was in the kitchen cooking. I was cooking chicken, frying chicken. The grease was hot, and they were running around playing. They came running into the kitchen, got all underfoot, and I turned, in, I turned around to tell them to go back out of the kitchen, go in the dining room, go in the hallway and play, but don't come in here running all underneath my feet. And just like we do as parents, I started uh, making statements about why you shouldn't do this, why you shouldn't do that. This is dangerous. That's dangerous. Don't do it. And where I had been cooking, there was a counter, there was the counter, and there was the stove where the uh, pan of grease had been. I put my hand as I'm talking to them and don't do this and listen to me and blah, blah, blah. I put my hand down on what I thought was the counter to lean as I went to turn to them. Um, I put my hand down and rested it on what I perceived to be the counter. After a second of talking to them, I'm suddenly aware of the fact, what is this thick, gooey liquid on my hand? And... I turned to look, and this hand was completely submerged up to the wrist in the pan of grease. When I realized, I screamed and went running through the house, hollering. My son ran behind me, screaming for me, and my daughter ran behind him. I'm running, trying to outrun the pain and not looking at it. And I ran and ran and ran until suddenly it dawned on me. I don't feel any pain. 
And I thought the nerve endings in my hand must be dead. It must have burnt me so bad it's dead. I couldn't bring myself to look at my hand. I'm still kind of running and scared because of just me and the kids in the house. And suddenly my son, he's, mommy, mommy, look at your hand, look at your hand. And I didn't want to look because I didn't want to see this horror. And finally, I kind of put it around slow. And my hand was exactly like it was before I ever put it in that grease. There are miracles that God has that defy the elements, that defy the natural order. Be it uh, glass, be it heat, be it fire. And no, this is not something that we play with and we test God with. This is one of the testimonies, the miracles that he shows us. That he lets us know he is ever present. He is, he has our rear guard. That means he has our back when we don't even know to watch out for something. Sometimes we stumble in and don't even realize what we're stumbling into. Uh, one of the other things, it was a financial blessing. Uh, me and my husband, the money got funny. We had like $13 in the bank account trying to wait for payday and we weren't, we didn't have enough money to classify as broke. We were less than broke. And I was going to the um, ATM hoping that this $13 that was in there that I could get the machine to give me 10 of it and leave the three to keep the account open. It was on a Sunday. It was on a Sunday. And I'm walking to the bank and I'm talking to God and telling him, you know, circumstances have occurred beyond our control and we don't have any money and we need money. Um, we had had a case that we had been working on for over three or four years to no avail. And I go to the bank and my mind is so locked into trying to get this $10 and thinking that it's going to fight me. It was on a Sunday. I couldn't even go in the bank to try to get the 10 out. I'm just working it from the ATM machine. And when I pushed it to see the balance, it was over 7000 and some odd dollars in that bank account on a Sunday. I didn't even know where the money came from. I ran home, went and got my husband, brought him back to look at it. I didn't even take money out. I, I, I brought him back. And as we're looking at it and looking at the balance, I took the card out, checked the balance again. It was still there. I took the card out, checked it again, still there. And this case that had gone unsolved for three or four years settled on a Sunday without them saying a word to us. And this money was in the bank account. There was other money in yet another account, but it was unbelievable with no notice on a Sunday for this money to appear in that account. $13 was in that account the day before. And I didn't try to get the money out because I didn't think it would give it to us. But by Sunday, we were in need beyond need, so I was just trying and walking and talking with God as I was walking up to the bank's ATM. There are miracles in our lives that happen where you can't explain it away. You cannot explain it away other than to say it's the power of God. It's the power of God. Um... It's on me to share this. I don't even know if it's coming out choppy or not, you know, and, uh, but the spirit's telling me, Levada, you got to tell him, you got to tell him, you got to let him know because somebody else is experiencing a miracle. Somebody out there is something's going on and you think nobody's going to believe you. Nobody, it, it, it sounds so above and beyond anything that would make sense that people either going to look at you strange or they're not going to believe you. But the one thing that I do know, miracles are not just written in the Bible. They're not in days of old. They are in the now. They happen in the now. Um, I've been in situations that by all accounts, I shouldn't be here. I, I shouldn't be here. I, I've been in things that 
say I was supposed to be gone. I, I mean, guns pulled, people pulling triggers and it didn't work. Just situations that said you should not be here. And the power of God stepping in, the power of God stepping in, showing out, and letting me know I'm here. I'm here. The other thing is that when people try to do things to God's anointed, God will remove those people. Some people, he strikes them down. Some people, he strikes them down. When I was doing the work of God, I had one man that was a friend of somebody I knew who he brought this man to my house. He shouldn't have. And the man came in the house disrespecting me, cursing and talking about how I think you're really a drug addict and everything you're doing, you're a liar, you this, you that. And the man gets in his car. I'm looking at my friend like, you should never have brought this person here. And um, actually, before they came, I had been communing with God, unbeknownst to either one of them. I let him in because my friend was with him and I wanted to talk to my friend. I did not expect the company he had with him to be there. Well, they get in the car together and they go around the corner. And uh, they go around the corner one time, then they turn up the street another time as they're crossing yet one more street. This car came out of nowhere doing like a hundred miles an hour. And my friend who was in the passenger seat saw the car coming and he stepped on the guy's foot to make the car go forward. Needless to say, the car got destroyed. Uh, the man did walk away, but he came back like, what did you do? And I was like, I didn't do anything. You know, when God says, touch not mine anointed, do my prophets no harm. You need to take heed because it's a powerful and terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the Most High God. No man knows the day or hour of their own death. And I also recognize that even though God does miracles all the time, that that doesn't mean that you can go out and be reckless because you don't know when he's going to call you home. But what I do know is, God is showing people things that you cannot explain away as coinky things, as happenstance. And the reason you can't is because your spiritual eyes are opening. Um, I've had visits, angelic visits, seeing things that you just cannot explain away. There is somebody who is going through spiritual revelations who... You may have just experienced a miracle yourself and you don't feel as though anybody will believe you or you don't have anybody to share it with or you don't know who to share it with even if you do share it because you don't know how they're going to receive it. Some people like to say you're crazy when in fact what it is, it's, it's not them doubting you. It's them doubting the power and the presence of God himself. Um, there are so many things that I could share, but I'm going to stop here and tell you if something is going on, a miracle that you've experienced, share it. Tell me something that happened to you. I am that person that's listening. I don't doubt the power of God. Does it shock me and surprise me? Of course, because it's, it's outside what we consider the norm. And again, I'm putting myself out there. I mean, judge whatever way you want to judge. I know what Elohim has done. I know what he continues to do. And like I said, I wasn't going to put this out there. I was, I, there are other things, but is pressing and he's telling me speak speak tell them tell them by all accounts certain injuries should have happened by all accounts money going into a bank on a sunday um with no paperwork nothing the paperwork came later um multiple miracles multiple miracles certain people being removed 
out of your life, out of my life, that it looked like you couldn't get rid of them, or whether they were at your job, living in your neighborhood, whatever, okay? And God will step in, and the irony, there, there is no big boom when it occurs, but you know God's signature is all over it. Brothers and sisters, I just wanted to share this. I hope you receive it in the spirit that I'm giving it in, in the spirit that the Most High gave it to me. And there is somebody, like I said, you need to hear this. You need to know that whatever happened, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't circumstantial. God's hand was all over it. He took control of the situation. And everything that says it shouldn't have happened, it didn't have the power to stop God. Elements, glass has no power when God steps in to shield you. Fire, car, guns, even the release of blessings with money. Blessings come in a multitude of ways. And God's spirit entering in Breaking through between eternity and now. Eternity is not, well, tomorrow or yesterday. It's a constant and it's in the now. It's in the now. So, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to share this with you. Walk in the light. Be at peace. And know that the Spirit of the Most High is among us. One of the other things that occurred this morning I woke up with singing all over me, singing. There was no music on, but the song, the, 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 the verse just played over and over and over and over. And it is in the book of Zephaniah. He will rest over you with singing. He will joy over you with singing. He rests in his love. God is in the midst. Be at peace and know that God is in the midst. You be blessed. Shalom.